Gary, Indiana, a city in Lake County, 25 miles from downtown Chicago, faces the difficulties of many Rust Belt cities, including unemployment, decaying infrastructure, and low literacy and educational attainment levels. It is estimated that nearly one-third of all houses in the city are unoccupied or abandoned. The perfect hunting ground for serial killer Darren Dion Van, also known as the Gary Strangler, a former Marine who was dishonorably discharged from the Marine Corps in 1993. Van preyed on female sex workers that he picked up on websites like Backpage, and although his official list of victims contains seven names, there are other unsolved murders in his area dating back to the year 2000, that fit Van's killer profile. Van was born on March 21, 1971, in Indiana. He was married for 16 years to a woman who was about 30 years older than him and he was reportedly arrested in Gary, Indiana for threatening the life of his girlfriend. He was charged with a Class D felony and spent 90 days in jail. Van was previously convicted on September 28, 2009 in Travis County, Texas, of a sexual assault committed in Austin in 2007 and sentenced to five years in a state penitentiary, being released on July 5, 2013. His wife, Maria Van, filed for divorce in August 2009 and their marriage was dissolved in April 2010. In August 2010, Thomas Hargrove, a reporter with the Scripps Howard News Service, used an algorithm to analyze crime data which strongly suggested a serial killer was at work in Gary, Indiana. Hargrove repeatedly urged the local authorities to investigate 15 suspicious deaths between 1980 and 2008. The local authorities denied there was any evidence showing a serial killer was at work. A Gary deputy coroner, whose suspicions were also rebuffed by the local police, agreed with Hargrove and also added three suspected victims to the list. Thomas Hargrove's algorithm is now the basis of the Murder Accountability Project. 19-year-old Afrika Hardy was Van's final victim. He killed her on October 19, 2014, and left her body in the bathtub of a room in a Motel 6 in Hammond, Indiana. When authorities found her body, which was covered in used condoms, they noted that she had been strangled with Van's hands, as well as a cord. For her part, Hardy was a local sex worker who kept in constant contact with her business partner. When Hardy didn't respond to her partner's texts and calls, her partner went to her motel room, found her body and called 911. The authorities checked the surveillance tapes and saw that Van was the last person to be seen with her. His vehicle was caught on video outside of the motel, making him fairly easy to find. Although several of his victims had decomposed to the point where it was hard to tell what implement Van strangled them with, in the case of Tracy Martin, it was clear that he used her own necklace, which was still around her neck, to strangle her to death. Martin's body was found in a house in the 2200 block of Massachusetts Street in Gary. It was a house littered with junk. Her body was left in a second floor bedroom. Only 48 hours earlier, police had been in the house searching for Martin, who had been missing since June 2014. Her mummified body was in a closet they had overlooked. Van says he killed her because he was mad, and she was the first person he ran into. According to Van, Christine Williams owed him $40 for some crack that he sold her. He believed that she had skipped town, in order to avoid paying the debt, but in reality, she had been arrested and spent a few days in jail. Once she was released, Van hunted her down and strangled her, before placing her body in the basement of an abandoned home at 4330 Massachusetts Street and covering it with a plastic drop cloth. Christine Williams was a mother of four and employed at the time of her death. By the time police found her in 2014, she was so badly decomposed that they needed dental records to ID her body. Van's life of crime dates back to 2004 when he spent 90 days in jail for beating up a girlfriend and threatening to blow up the house where she was staying. He was married at the time, so this woman was definitely his mistress. The police caught him red-handed in that case, standing outside the home she sought shelter in, with a gas can and a lighter. He then raped a sex worker in Austin, Texas, and wound up with a six-year sentence for sexual assault. After his arrest for the murder of Afrika Hardy, Van confessed to police. He told them about six other women whom he had killed and led law enforcement on a disturbing scavenger hunt, pointing out the houses, and in some cases, the rooms within them, where his victims' corpses could be found. Despite showing the police where he hid the bodies, Van pled not guilty in court. These six women turned out to be Aneth Jones, Tara Beatty, Christine Williams, Sonia Billingsley, Tracy Martin, and Tanya Gatlin, all of whom disappeared in 2014.
Most serial killers establish patterns. They kill their victims with one single method and dispose of their bodies in the same way each time, ritualistically. This is true of Van. He strangled his victims, sometimes with his bare hands, other times with an electrical cord or a piece of jewelry. He then placed their bodies in abandoned houses in the city of Gary, Indiana. In some cases, these houses were used as flophouses, and they were full of detritus left behind by drug users and the homeless, people who wouldn't complain about the stench of a dead body. Even though Van only confessed to seven murders, some believe that he killed many other women. According to Thomas Hargrove, who helped the FBI create a database of unsolved homicides, a number of prostitutes were killed in the Gary, Indiana area from the early 1990s through the 2000s. The deaths stopped for several years, a date range that coincidentally matches the time Van spent in prison in Texas, and then they started back up again in 2013, upon Van's release from jail and re-emergence into Indiana society. Once Van was released from prison and allowed to go back to Indiana, the authorities in Texas labeled him as a low-risk sexual offender. This meant that they believed he wasn't likely to commit another offense in the future. Paul Blart's small cop would have probably done a better job. Van used the website Backpage, a classified ad site that is popular with sex workers, to contact Hardy who had placed an ad there. Van's username was Big Boy Appetite, and he lured in other victims through the site as well, answering their personal ads, which solicited dates, that were actually ways to find Johns for the prostitution businesses. Not much is known about Van's life, other than his date of birth, some information about his marriage, and the fact that he worked for a temp agency. However, he did spend some time serving in the U.S. Marine Corps. For less than two years, Van was stationed at four different Marine bases in the United States, including Camp Pendleton and Fort Bliss. He received an other than honorable discharge in 1993 for undisclosed reasons. A Marine Corps spokesperson did say that Mr. Van's premature discharge and rank are indicative of the fact that the character of his service was incongruent with the Marine Corps expectations and standards. Although it's perfectly legal for an accused person to represent themselves in court, without the help of a seasoned lawyer, it's not recommended in cases involving the death penalty. Van however, for a time at least, served as his own lawyer in court. In 2015, he declared that he wished to represent himself during his murder trial. However, he later unfortunately changed his mind and hired an attorney. On March 7, 2016, Van was charged with murder in the deaths of seven victims. The death penalty was originally sought for each. The following day, Van was charged with rape and attempted murder for an alleged February 2014 attack. Van was also charged with battery by bodily waste for allegedly throwing a carton of urine and feces at a Lake County Correctional Officer at the jail on February 24, 2016. In April 2016, a judge denied a motion by Van's attorneys to sever the murder cases of Aneth Jones and Africa Hardy, and, as a result, the capital murder trial in said cases would have continued as one. In a motion filed August 5, 2016, Van's attorneys argued that Indiana's death penalty law is unconstitutional, but the Indiana Supreme Court turned down Van's request to look at the constitutionality of the state's death penalty statute before he goes to trial. Van pleaded guilty to seven murders and as part of a plea agreement, prosecutors dropped the death penalty. On May 25, 2018, Van was sentenced to seven concurrent life sentences without the possibility of parole. <laughs> <laughs> 